one of Britain's most outstanding cricketers and commentators, Geoffrey Boycott, has finally received a knighthood for services to his sport. Well, the news came as the former Prime Minister Theresa May's resignation honours list was released. And to be honest, it was full of uh, cronies who helped her conspire to completely wreck Brexit. But amid all the cronyism and the terrible awards for failure, one or two names actually shone out to me as a cricket fan. <laughs> Sir Andrew Strauss, who was rewarded for not only being a successful England captain, but also for the outstanding work he's done with uh, the foundation set up following the very sad death of his wife. Ruth mm. Strauss, uh, Ruth Strauss Foundation, but also Jeffrey Boycott. Now, Jeffrey, before we get to talk to you, I want to play a little clip from the last time you came on Good Morning Britain where we raised the issue of the fact you were still Jeffrey. Theresa May is a massive fan of yours. Mm -hmm. You've never been knighted, which I, as a sport, England sporting well, fan... And I've never been invited for tea. Really? Well, if Theresa May, if you're watching this programme... Never! It is time the Prime Minister of his country invited Geoffrey Boycott to Downing Street for tea, and it's also time, in my view, that you were knighted for your services to cricket and England sport because you have brought such pleasure to yeah, so yeah. many of us for so long, Geoffrey, and I, I'm launching the campaign officially Thank this you. morning on Good Morning Britain. Well, Geoffrey, the campaign worked. You are now Thank Sir Geoffrey, and we congratulate you seriously on a long overdue award. I think it's, it's thoroughly well deserved. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and I've still not been for tea. <laughs> <laughs> so Has I'm Theresa looking forward May not to that. invited you yet? <laughs> no, when she spoke to me on Tuesday, um, I was surprised. Um, I asked her if she was coming to the Oval, the test match mm. around the corner, and uh, I thought she'd be coming, but uh, she said, we're a bit busy at the minute, nobody's <laughs> quite sure what's happening. What, so, what does um, she say to you, Jeff? She's a big fan I, I of yours. That, that, uh, what does she say to you about when she told you the good yeah, news? Yeah, she was... Oh, she just told me that she wanted to put me forward for a night, and I was surprised. I mean, I'd just been to lunch with my daughter. It was uh, on the... Tuesday, it was a birthday on the Thursday, I and mean, as I'd be doing cricket commentary, so it was a good time to see her and I've, I've lunch in Manchester. So I've got, it was a hell of a surprise. But it's obvious that there's a lot going on at Parliament because she didn't come to the Oval Test match. <laughs> and how does it make you feel, uh, Geoffrey, to be knighted and to have this um... day now at the Palace and potentially meet the Queen or whoever presents you with the, the knighthood? What does that mean to you? as one uh, of the great Englishmen of, of my generation? Um, thrilled to bits that it's for my cricket. Mm. I mean, yes, I've done things for charity, but so have you, so I've lots of people. I'm glad it, it's for my cricket, for my performances, for Yorkshire and England. Um, sad in some ways that uh, my mum and dad never really saw me play much. I mean, my father died from a mining accident that he'd had oh, when I was about 10, and he died when I was 26. His health had been ruined through being crushed with empty tubs. And so I played for Yorkshire from, what, round about 62, three. He was dead in 67. I didn't have a car. Couldn't afford a car till 1965, just two years before he died. So I couldn't really take him to the matches and see me play. I think he saw me play only once. My mother was shy and uh, she got cancer and died in 78, so she didn't see too much. She saw on television me get my 100th 100 at Headingley. That, that's a bit sad. And my Uncle Algy, my Uncle Algy was everything from nine. He took me to cricket, he encouraged me, he gave me a rollicking now and again and picked myself up and so forth. So those three people sad. On the good side, the nice thing will be when I go to see the Queen, I hope it's the Queen, I like the Queen. <laughs> is that <laughs> I can take my wife and I've got a daughter I can take and I can take her husband, hopefully. So that'll be a nice thing. So there's sadness and there's niceness about it. And we've, we've had a running joke as cricket fans over the years of calling you Sir Geoffrey, even when you weren't. I think the cricket, the cricket yeah. world will be united now in relief that we can finally legitimately call you Sir Geoffrey. <laughs> Well, you call me what you want. The bowlers did when I was batting, so I'm not bothered. <laughs> when you look back at your extraordinary uh, career, It's recognition. Jeffrey, yeah, I was going to ask you, I mean, you've got it for cricket. When you look back... It's recognition. What, what, was the, what was been the greatest moment? It's talent, is that. Definitely talent, but it's... It doesn't stretch your character and your mental powers quite the same. 
fast bowling particularly can hurt you. So you've got to be tough, you've got to be brave. Everybody will remember my 100th 100, so will I. It was a magic mm. moment. But it was the innings before when I came back to Test cricket after being three years out. I was past my best, really. I was 36. Most people were retiring then. And I was still supposed to be the best player in England. Some doubted it. Some wanted me to show that I could still do it. And I went and ran out the local hero at Nottingham, mm. Derek Randall, before I got going which made the innings worse and the test of character and mental strength even harder. And I managed to get 100 with Alan Knott, which put us in a position to win the match when we had been 80 for five and going to lose the game. That is, for me, my finest innings because it put together great skill under pressure, the mental strength, the tortuous nature of the moment when... You come back and you run out the local hero, lovely lad, Derek Randall, and you just want to hold to bury yourself in, jump in. You want to get off the park. You want to just disappear. You're at your lowest ebb. But I held myself together and got 100, and we won. You That's did, and Jeffrey, I remember, I remember was... watching that, and it was a remarkable innings. It showed all the facets of your character, mm. the determination, the resilience. Yes. You were one of the toughest people to ever get out. Every bowler agrees with that. Mm. And mm. it's great you finally got this recognition. Before we let you go, final word, we've lost the Ashes, no. uh, but we won the World Cup this summer. It's been a game of oh. two halves for the England cricket team. Mm. I think, if they were honest, which... Politicians aren't always, are they? And now there are uh, people who have run our game. They should put their hand up. The coach, the Andrew Strauss, a lovely lad, uh, the chief exec, the chairman, should all put their hand up and say, hey, for four years, we were a dreadful one-day team when it was played in Australia four years ago. We worked hard, we planned hard to win the, Ashes, to win the World Cup to actually try and win the Champions Trophy two years before we got to the semi-final, to change the nature of our one-day team, and we did that, then they all should take some credit for it. But in doing that, they took the focus off Test cricket. Mm. And we came to this Ashes series, we hadn't planned for it like the Australians had. And we've got our just desserts where we've won one, but we should have actually won the one at Lords mm. with a bit of... There was rain and bad light. But actually, we've lost three, really, because Ben Stokes got us out of jail. He did, yeah. We should have lost that. It was unbelievable in it. And so we, we've lost two to Australia. The one Ben saved us. We should have lost the series 3-1 with one to go. And that just, just shows the bad planning, the no planning by the authorities. They want test cricket, our test team, to do better in two years' time in Australia, they need to start planning for an Ashes yeah. series in Australia. Totally like agree. Like they plan for the World Cup. Jeffrey, we? we've, got to, we've run out of time. We could talk to you about this for a long time, but I totally agree with you. We focused on one-day cricket and we won the World Pleasure. Cup, and, and congratulations to all of them for that. But I agree with you. The Ashes, to me, is always more yes, important absolutely. than any one-day game, and we need to win those Ashes back in Australia in two years. And when we do, the commentary will be provided... Yeah by Sir Geoffrey Boycott, and I'm delighted to use those words as we leave you. Congratulations once again, <laughs> Sir Geoffrey. Thank you.